Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It's a great pleasure and honor to welcome Dr. Pierce Corbin, the owner of a business called Weather Action. This business helps predict both extreme weather and weather from around the world, even a year in advance. Dr. Corbin uses revolutionary techniques to do that, having to do with solar activity and lunar activity, both separately and in conjunction with each other, as part of the whole system's equation of bringing us predictions about climate. He's also said some fascinating things related to climate, one being what's natural is a million-year cycle of an ice age and the warming in between. We're going to learn a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome physicist, astrophysicist, meteorologist, and owner of Weather Action, Pierce Corbin. Well, hello, and thanks very much for having me on this program. It's a great honor to be here. It's a great honor to have you, Pierce. You're a mystery man out there in the climate world. You seem to be predicting weather with a very high degree of accuracy. I know that some of how you do it is proprietary, which I understand, yes. I hope that for the future of humanity with extreme weather that at the end of the day, we're not solely dependent on you for this because if anything, God forbid, happens to you, a lot of people who are depending upon your newsletters, your predictions with regard to agriculture are going to lose their crops. So we hope that in the future, this becomes more able to be released. Sure, it will be in the public domain in due course. Uh um, and it, in fact, there's, you know, uh, um, secure places where the information is held. Uh, but um, my intention is to release it all. Um, the difficulty we have uh, is partly that we have to be in a strong enough position to do so rather than just say things and then have people uh, copy them or more likely just say it's all impossible because it doesn't fit into the pervading ideology of climate around CO2. I want to start by asking you a question that I heard in another interview that you did. You had made a statement saying, look, what's the norm is a million year ice age and then a period of warming. Can you explain what you meant by that? Yes, yes. If you look at the data for the last million years by examining ice cores, you see that every 100,000 years or so, there's a warm period like we're in now, and they last about 10,000 years. And all the space in between, there's 90,000 years or, or often more, is uh, ice age. So the natural state of the world is ice age, uh, or ice ages separated by short interglacials. And we are in one of them now. And we are near the end of one of them, statistically speaking because we've had about 10,000 years of this one, which is lo as long as any of them have lasted. Now, before a million or so years ago, or some millions of years ago, then the uh, the whole situation was different, and generally it was a generally warmer world. But um, the situation we're in now is this oscillation with the normal state being ice age. Do you think that most of the people who think about climate have that frame of reference as being that no, large of a know. cycle? The, the propaganda on the, on the media is that uh, the world has always been something like it is and it's getting warmer. Well, actually, the world is mostly being cold, much, much colder for the last million years. And it's uh, also, um, in all the last uh, five interglacials, it's got to warmer than this. In detail of this interglacial, where the last 700 years have been the coldest part of the last 10,000 years, i.e. the last interglacial, and we've had warmer periods before within this generally warm interglacial, i.e. we've had the medieval warm period, the Bronze Age, uh, and so forth. And the Bronze Age, about 5,000 years ago, was, was much warmer than that. You have said in other interviews that this cooling cycle could go as late as 2030 or 2035. I don't know which one it was. Which yeah, one are you it, saying? Well, we think, uh, we, well, we are in a general cooling trend now. 
which is more or less admitted even by the people that produce fraudulent data. They are not arguing that the world is is warming unless they're just telling lies. Um, the the what happens if you compare solar activity in the past with with um, well basically if you look about go through ten magnetic cycles of the sun about two hundred and twenty years or so then. Um, the solar activity kind of repeats. It's not exact, but it does kind of repeat. Now, if you use that as a comparison, then that means that uh, what happened uh, 220 or so years ago is going to pretty well repeat with solar activity, which and that means you're going to have a big decline in solar activity, uh, which in a smoothed out sense uh, over some decades means you will also get a generally cooler world. And that is... Uh, statistically very reliable. It doesn't hold in detail, but it, it holds for like two decades. At least one magnetic cycle of the sun, you can say, or give a good average temperature. So we're heading for uh, a general decline in world temperatures and reaching a minimum around uh, 2035. So how do we receive what you're sharing with us and of course dr don easterbrook also said something similar in terms mm -hmm. of the cooling going on i did an interview with him many months yep. ago a great many of us have ingested misinformation about climate and therefore yes. a great many of us are going to be preparing for warming when it's cooling so what do people in agriculture do well they should ignore what their governments tell them and uh, prepare for Longer winters, like you've been having in in, in America, um, uh, generally speaking, shorter summers. Although the big extremes recently, we we'll, we'll talk about those separately. But generally speaking, that's what's going to happen in both hemispheres. There'll be longer winters and shorter summers, um, and this trend will continue. And uh, that is contrary to all the claims of the global warmers. If you recall, they said we would see the end of snow by the end of this decade in America and, and Britain and most of Europe or most of America. And, uh, and that, um, well, we just have baking summers all the time. Now, of course, uh, that hasn't actually been the case. The, 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 their prognoses have been uh, shown to be false. And the world has actually cooled when they said it would warm up due to CO2. CO2 has gone up, but not the temperatures. And I do want to talk about CO2 for a couple of minutes with you, because CO2 a couple of years ago was deemed by the EPA to be a toxic pollutant. <laughs> it was considered to be the driver of climate change. Can you put this in perspective for us? What drives what and why? Can you give us sure. the essence of this? Well, the idea that CO2 drives anything in climate or the weather is completely false. There's no evidence for it. The only evidence is that CO2 levels on average, if you look over thousands or tens of thousands or millions of years, CO2 levels are driven by world temperatures because the sea temperature controls the rate at which, uh, or the dynamic equilibrium uh, between carbon dioxide in the, sea in the air and carbon dioxide in the sea, which is where most CO2 is, in, in fact. So when the sea is warmer, more CO2 comes off. And when it's cooler, you get, uh, the, the sea absorbs um, CO2. Um, um, their ideas about CO2 are just not borne out by... Uh, evidence, i.e. there's no correlation uh, between CO2 and world temperatures except what I said, namely that on, on, uh, when there's big changes in world temperatures, like when you leave an ice age, then CO2 levels go up. And when you go into an ice age, CO2 levels go down. And they go down afterwards or go up afterwards. So they follow temperatures, not dry temperatures. Your question then is, well, what is actually driving climate change and, and weather extremes? Well, our understanding from our long analysis of solar activity, which is charged particles coming from the sun and their modulation by the moon, is that uh, all the extreme events of any importance can be explained by uh, changes of solar activity and the modulation of the flow of particles from the sun by uh, lunar effects. 